action. Action, yes. Welcome to the Gotta Have Miami podcast. This is episode, what, 24? 24. 24, and, we're, and somebody put an ad on one of our YouTube thingies. I don't know who it is. <laughs> So, uh, supposedly, we have to hit the subscribe button. We need subscribers. Hit the subscribe button. So, do us a favor and click subscribe right. on our channel, and you'll be notified every time we upload one of right. our shindigs It'll here. It'll make us quasi-famous. Almost famous. Almost famous. Let me but get my coffee, too. I know we're drinking little afternoon coffees, cafecitos, <laughs> here in the uh, thing. And we're inside because it is hot as hell outside. It really is. It's the hu brutal. And the humidity, yeah. it's, it's definitely... In the middle of summer in Miami. Yeah. And I was going to do my podcast today with a helmet on, but um, I was told not <laughs> to. got voted out. I got voted out because, you know, real estate, man, it's rough out there. You sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes you got, and it's, and part of our podcast today is going to be actually about that. It's going to get, we're seeing some trends coming up that are going to be really, really difficult for a lot of folks. Uh, so um, I think there's one that's probably good news for the real mm -hmm. estate yep. market. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one that's, that's probably be, bad news. Which yeah. one should we start with first? Uh, let's start with the good news. Okay. So good news, which really is bad news. For some, depends your perspective. Depend your perspective, depend yeah, on which side you lean government wise. Yeah. So yeah. So go ahead and shoot. What is it? I'm having my coffee. You were the one that brought up the topic. <laughs> I'm talking about how international politics influence, influ have. influence us, Always especially have. as in Miami, we're yep. very influenced by international markets. Mm -hmm. So down in Colombia, they had some type of election. We don't have comments on it because we don't know about Colombian politics. But um, due to those results, it said that some yeah. wealth is moving to Miami. You know, every, time, every time historically, and this goes back to when Miami became a more populated city, in, in essence, you know, probably late 70s early 80s and we're uh, relatively, from a population standpoint, we're kind of young yeah. in the way that, that we've grown up. And we saw that any time that there was any kind of change of government, any turmoil mm -hmm. in uh, uh, the South American, the Central American region, right. immediately that was the influx you had. Correct. Uh, in the 1980s you had you know, um, the Sandinistas and we had an influx of uh, Nicaraguan. Right. Uh, we've had Haitian uh, come up, we've had Argentinians come up, we've had you know, Colombians come up, we've had Venezuelans. Everybody. So anything that happens in this side of the hemisphere automatically triggers a uh, boost in you know that uh, that group coming over yeah so, I mean so that's some good news for sellers out there I'm sure the sellers have noticed that people aren't physically knocking down their doors anymore well, they mm -hmm. they have a little bit more patience yeah. you know it's, unless you have a listing over in the grove yeah and that, unless it's in the grove then yeah it's still hot there Yeah, we just put one up and uh, in the first day we had uh, like six or seven showings three offers uh, on the property and uh, and, and, it, and it needs work it's yeah. a property that needs work yeah. but lo location location location, location. location. <laughs> that is not stop and the fact that there is a lack of uh, dirt and land and we'll yeah. and we'll always have them we always we always talk about that there's a reason why we you know we we'll always mention that yeah. so I think uh, that's really one that we're gonna see probably an influx of that let's see if it plays out the way that we anticipate it to play out yeah uh, and see how many more folks we can Absorb in Miami. We had well. We're supposed to absorb a million over the next five uh, years. No, we talked about that. By the way, the little hut that we were in in the uh, previous episode—that yeah. was the actual little structure from the original mansion that was on that property before it got torn down. Interesting. I know. It's really and they cool. left that hut. Historic, just of that, and it kind of looked a little rough because there was some cracked walls in there, but <laughs> a little spalling action. Get a that wouldn't pass a forty-year certification. <laughs> it's okay. It's a little yeah. hut. Yeah, it's a little hut. So we uh, we we had that fun, but again, um, I think. That topic is going to come up. I think we're going to start to see a little bit more of that. And I think one of the main topics, which we'll go to from a bad news standpoint, is that there's, there's, the articles are starting to come out, the, the conversations are starting to come out about how you're going to insure condominiums. Right. And that's really going to be the hardest thing that we're going to be seeing in the near future. Yeah. And again, we've talked about it previously. We talked about it before it even happened, before mm -hmm. we even... We knew that this was going to be something that we were going to be prepared for, and it is going to affect a lot of folks, and I mean a lot a of lot. folks. We're not talking one or two. We're talking a lot of individuals when you see that your buildings won't be able to be insured, and if they are to be insured, they're going to have to be fully I, funded. I read that um, the insurance went up 82% mm -hmm. for one building. Yeah. Eighty-two yeah. percent. Yeah, that's almost no, double. The ones, the couple that we, you know, we manage in our, and the ones that you know I take care of, they're very small. They were talking, they're, they're just basically almost like mini homeowner associations. Yeah. They've gone up twenty-five percent, and some of them haven't even. They've gotten the cancellation policy, 
So, and that's just on a small building that really is not even that difficult to insure. So again, where are you going to go for insurance? Where are you gonna get these things done? And I think what's gonna happen, what I fear for residents of these buildings is that the, the, the insurance companies are gonna require so much in the, um, in like funds and mm -hmm. funding in your reserves that it will make maintenance fees outrageous. almost outrageous and possibly on top of your taxes, right. top of your real estate taxes and you know, in, my, in Miami-Dade. And I think that's really gonna be a generating factor into a lot of folks having to either sell leave do whatever because it, they yeah. just won't be able to you won't be able to fund them it's it's that simple i mean unless you have boatloads of cash right not we don't all have boatloads but no. some people do i mean if you own a condo whether it's your whole you know where mm -hmm. you live or you're an investor if you're renting it out if you're gonna sell and you think you're gonna get out mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it might sit there for a while yeah. i mean we have three yeah. listings yeah. Um, that are condos that are just it's, it's just because it's it, it's in between no one really knows what's gonna you know, happen. where it's gonna go what's gonna happen how yeah. it's gonna how it's gonna play out and again this is we're in 2022 how's it gonna be in 2023 when the new law takes effect that you're gonna have to be able to report all this and then what's the insurance gonna be looking like in 23 24 right and I think that's really one of the critical points and this is where legislation has to come in you know we talk all we talk a little bit about politics here I think most of the politicians, to be quite honest, are especially locally are clueless. They say one thing and they know they can't. I don't even think they know that they can't do it. Right. Like they'll say something and in the same sentence they contradict themselves with like, oh, you know, Miami's been, you know, so effective and we've been doing such a great job and bringing so many people down here and so many prosperous individuals and blah, 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 blah. And oh, yeah, we can't do anything about affordable housing. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's no kidding. First of all, you don't have the dirt for it. And then now, let's talk about it. If you were going to go affordable, and I don't want to get into this because we've talked about it, but what I don't like about politicians or I don't like about some of our public servants is, and again, they're saying one thing, and in reality, they can't do it unless you make so many big changes. Right. So here's an example. You're going to get affordable housing. What are you going to do? You're going to go vertical. Of course. Right? You're going to go vertical. Yeah. But now the laws are telling you you're going to have to fund this thing full percent. Yeah. You're going to, how are you going to insure this? Yeah. You're going to be, it's going to be a tax reference. So how are you going to make it affordable? Yeah. And affordable in the essence of what is the medium income, you know, and what medium income are you working on? Are you working on Miami-Dade's medium income? Which is probably going to go to about into the 60s. Uh, it should come out or it should have already come out this, this year. And then, but Miami's uh, income is, you know, X. Yeah. And then you got to go through the whole zoning stuff that we talked about. Yeah, which is another issue all on its own. So yeah. even if you had all the money in the world, yeah. then you, you got the zoning laws yeah. telling you you can't then, go yeah. up this high, you can't or do you this can't, and that. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and that's, again, we talked about zoning. So there's all of these intricate little things that work. And Together. then you've got these clowns saying things and it's like, what the hell? You know you <laughs> can't do it. And but they but promises promises but people don't want to hear that and they say oh yeah we can you know, yeah you're gonna get one building in one location that hits two of the uh, marks that make it affordable and that's but it you've made that's it you're done <laughs> you've made you're affordable done. housing and then you put your political campaign on that I chartered you know affordable <laughs> housing blah 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 and all this is like you're thinking oh what the hell I know so it is very and again I you know we don't want to be. We try not to be on the, you know, the pessimistic side. But oh, I'm an optimist. You know that. Yeah, so you're young. That's why. <laughs> that's why. As you get old and crotchety, you're like, ah, everything went to hell. Ah, I remember back. So, um, so I think what ends up happening is that you, you have to be prepared for this. And as, you know, a buyer or as a seller, you really have to understand where the market or try uh, to anticipate where the market's going to be, right. you know, two or three years down the line. So you can plan. Because as you mentioned many times before, these are life-changing moments. Yes. You're either you know progressing in life or you're actually downsizing right. in life. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are going to be affected by what happens in the legislative uh, in the state of Florida mm -hmm. nationally. But again, I just look and say, who's going to insure here? Yeah. Under I mean, what conditions? And then going back to the condos, mm -hmm. it's... If you think in two or three years you might want to get out of your condo, mm -hmm. you probably want to start now because yeah. it's not it's not going to be quick. If it is overnight, you're super lucky. You're super cheap. Yeah, <laughs> because 
It's the condo market in Miami right now is a funky place. Yeah, and it was, it just it, it's just in general. And, and again, where is it? Where is it going to? Where is it going to go? And where is it going to be? And um, I don't know. It's going to be a very well. Interesting... I thought that the developers were going to start, you know, scooping up endangered buildings once the documents sure. were on the portal next February you, you, yeah, you when it was public that. record. But then I read an article going back to the insurance, which it didn't even cross my mind when we were having that conversation. Mm -hmm. And they said that that's going to alert the developers yeah. who are these endangered buildings, and they're going to come and buy up collapse, the building. But then, what are they going to do with them? So they're going to. So you go back. It's it's kind of a, a, um, you a know, never a circle, ending circle. A never ending circle because now you're going to say, okay, I'm going to take over this building. I'm going to collapse this condo. Right. So I'm going to buy it for X amount. First of all, you won't be able to. So depending on where the condo is right. and how you're going to do it, you know what is the what is going to be the buyout. So let's say it's a 250 uh, unit building, right? Or let's say that's big. Uh, let's say 150 unit. Okay. You're going to offer them what 500 a million bucks, whatever. Then you're owning this land for a certain amount of money. Then what are you going to do to build that? We go back. To, it's going to be ultra. Has to right. be ultra. So rich. the legislation needs to catch up because. There, there's that won't fix the problem yeah. and you have to then insure that building you won't have an insurance yeah. on that building and I think what's going to happen and I and, and what I hope that uh, politicians and again they they're not all that smart because if they were they know so politicians are smart at getting elected politicians are mostly not very smart their their real true gift is being elected <laughs> once in office eh, nothing up there guys and you look around and look at our, you know some of our local polls and some no of the names. state polls and yeah no <laughs> names needed but it's just it you just know how to get elected so there's really no sense of what is really being felt on the ground level yeah and uh, and I do think that most most politicians mean well but they're so busy just you know the, making their promises and the end, going at, through the motions that they really don't do anything they they don't they don't have the they they don't have the capacities. Most of them are failures in the in a, in a private life, because that's how you become a public servant. Um, a little wow. tidbit. I remember. Well, I remember when I when I ran when I ran for uh, commissioner. Right. I, everybody asked me, "What are you going to do about affordable housing?" I said, "Nothing. I can't." And that's they said, "Oh, you are saying it because you're a realtor." And I said, "Yeah, I'm saying it because I am it's a real truth. estate agent <laughs> and I do this every single day, and truth. we know where the market is going, and I know what the limitations are." And it's very difficult to do. And then people say, oh, you know, you're this. I said, listen, I'm just telling you the truth. You yep. don't like it. Oh, well. Can't do anything about it. Some people but can't I, handle I, the truth. But I think from government standpoint, I think what they need to do is make sure that, again, there's not an overreach. We talk about public safety all the time. It's one yeah. of the key elements in, in, uh, in public services. You're always you know, doing for public safety. Yeah. But you really have to make decisions that will allow the economic factors to survive. Right. To be able to drive and continue to build for the needs of the uh, of the state. Yeah. And that's where I, I just you know you can't shut it all down. You can't make all of these buildings uh, f fully funded reserves. Yeah, it's it's, it's impossible. It's impo It's it's unaffordable. <laughs> when you look at these buildings, just think about having to rebuild that building or keep maintaining that building. Yeah. And some of the numbers are insane. Then again, you only are doing buildings for the elite the privilege right yeah they're not affordable to begin with anyways so you've so. got it you've got to make you've got to make not some concessions but you've just got to understand that policies that may sound really good well, yeah how do they play out what's yeah, the trickle down in, in principle they may not work at all especially when you're trying to do that affordable component and you're making it unaffordable by trying to solve one problem yeah and you're killing it with another problem so well, um, you can call us. I'll tell you how to. Do it. <laughs> um, we have I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it here because then some politician will run with it, <laughs> become famous, and take all of my, uh, take all of our ideas. Uh, we have seen an increase in inventory. We're starting to see, yep, in, spe in, spe in certain sections. So that, it's also summer, so we've talked yeah, about this Yeah, calm before. down, calm yeah. down. Yep. But now's your opportunity, a little bit less competition out yep. there. Yep. If you're a buyer, if you're a seller, get realistic about yep. your price. Mm -hmm. But the demand is still there. I'm not taking demand it away there. from the sellers because yep. the demand's there. Absolutely. Um, I got a call from somebody today that will be a first-time home buyer. Yay! And their question is... <laughs> I said, do you think it's a good idea to buy now in the bubble? I said, it's not a bubble. There's no bubble. If it was a bubble, it would have popped already. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially now here in, I mean, I'll venture, I don't know all of Florida, but mm -hmm. I'll venture to say Florida is only going to continue to go up. 
in land value. You say it all the time. We're stuck in between two bodies of water. Yep. So and the one, value will just in, go and up. And one in the middle. Yeah, and then the Everglades run through it. Yep. So mm -hmm. limited uh, space to build means your dirt is worth more money. And that takes me to that o that always comment about insurance and stuff like that. You know, there's there's got to come a time and there's got to come a point where insurance companies finally realize that they have to value dirt as yeah. part of a mortgage package. Yes. So again, and we've talked about this, if I if my mortgage is $200,000, but my land, which is rare, which is, is worth a million bucks, why do I even need to carry insurance, windstorm insurance or some insurance that I don't, that I don't need. Yeah, and that you're would, sitting on more than the worth of your house. Right. And again, legislation won't allow it because you're pooling money in just like Social Security into something that you know you're never gonna use, yeah. but somebody else may use it down the road. Right. So it is a catch-22 um, and there are ways around it, but Let's see what happens. We won't uh, drag you out too long. Nope. Just do us a favor if you haven't already, click subscribe. We, we're getting views of it and I'm really surprised. <laughs> I don't even know who's watching this. Thanks for but watching, thanks guys. thanks for watching, guys. I mean, uh, we appreciate it. We're really getting some uh, good uh, traction. So, so today we covered insurance, affordable mm -hmm. housing, yep. the Colombians. Yep. Um, I like that, the Colombians. <laughs> that's a movie, La Colombiana. <laughs> there you go. There you go, that's right. Uh, so. Stay tuned. Yeah, and, we'll hit us up with, and hit us up with any questions. You know where to find us. I mean, we're yeah. You could text us, email yeah, us, yeah, comment yeah. on our page. Yeah, we're yeah. always around. So uh, we thank you very much. Have Thanks a great for joining. One. We'll see you Friday.